Here are seven outstanding ideas about writing a thought leadership book from my interview with Professor Linda Gratton, a colleague at London Business School. First, if you're a coach, a consultant, an expert in any field and you want to be influential, then there's no doubt about it, says Gratton. You should write a book. I mean, I'm a professor at the London Business School, so part of my role there is to be a thought leader. And for me, thought leadership is writing books. You're a successful academic or business person, you know how to manage your diary. So the only way to write a book, says Grattan, is to stop making excuses and write a book. So lots of people like to talk about writing a book, and I don't have any problem with that. I don't have any problem with people talking about writing a book, but it's not the same as writing a book. Writing a book is about getting up every morning at six o'clock for four hours for a year. Now, you've got to differentiate your book from the very many weak books in your market by sharing the unique research that only you have. I think the first two books, Living Strategy and Democratic Enterprise, were really, I was really feeding off the research that had come out of the leading edge because we had extraordinary insights into organisations. So my next big book was Hotspots, and that was because I built another consortium which looked at collaboration. So Hotspots and Glow were both about collaboration. Don't try to make your book appeal to everyone, she says. Focus your book on one reader at a time. But do consider writing books in pairs. In general, I've done books in pairs. where So there's a view that you can't talk about the individual and the organisation at the same level because some of your readers want to hear about themselves mm. and some of your readers want to hear about corporations and they're not the same person. Invest a good amount of time and money in crafting a strong cover. Your book has to pop off the shelf and, increasingly, at thumbnail size on the web. You know, the covers of a book, as those of you who've written books know, is very interesting. And I I really liked the covers of Living Strategy. And you see how I'd sort of, we'd used some of the same motif. And then I went through a red phase, as you can see, and everything had to be red. Um, so if you're listening in black and white. Uh, yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> living Strategy has a, a sort of a, a flower a motif growing and living, good, yeah. good idea. Democratic Enterprise has a huge dandelion it's on the a, cover. Yeah. And so if you blow that, the yeah. seeds will spread everywhere so yeah. I, I love that idea those yeah I ideas. love that and the colour the theme they, is very they much some the of same. my favourite but they're not you know marketing marketeers don't like them because they're grey and marketeers like red which is why my books then suddenly then went red. suddenly went red see working on your book as an investment whether that's to share your message widely or to attract high value clients because you should not expect to make much money from direct book sales. I've Ages never seen it. a book as a way of, sell, of making money, actually. Yes. And it's only really with a 100-year life that you make any, we've made any money. But, you know, having said that, by, by the time the agent's taken their cut and the sub-agent's taken their cut and this has taken their cut and that's taken their cut, even a book that sold half a million would not keep me in the manner to which I've become accustomed. <laughs> Grattan's parting shot is clear. Don't just dream about writing a book. If there's a book in you, just do it. I think writing a book is hard, and I think it's very nice to say that you're writing a book. I think that's a lovely thing to say, or I've got a book in my mind, or, but most people don't. Get more insights into writing a book from my full interview with Linda at authorschannel.com.